Hello, America. Hey, how was your time away for, for uh, you know, the holidays? Was it as great as mine? Because mine started off really good. I started with an omnibus. I love those. I wish all of our buses could be omni. Um, the uh, betrayal of the GOP over the holidays from the Senate. Uh, yeah, I, I think they've had their last shot with me. I'm done. I'm absolutely done. Now, there is something that is going on that we want to talk about tonight. And then we want to get to the place where we can talk about what should we be doing as conservatives. See, the letters GOP and the word conservative used to go hand in hand, interchangeable. <laughs> no, no, not anymore. I don't even know what people in Washington think either one of those mean. The current U.S. national debt is $31 trillion. Uh, our budget, if you can even call it that anymore, because they don't vote on one, they don't write anything down, it's operating at a $1.3 trillion deficit. And then there is, uh, you know, no relief in sight. Republicans should be the ones that stop the madness. But no, 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 no. They don't seem to care. This has got to end. America, we have lost our story. We have lost our narrative. We have lost our North Star. And uh, our out of control spending is really only one part of it. The border crisis must be addressed. Instead, it's either ignored altogether or used just as a political talking point, debated and then swept under the rug. 233,000 illegals were apprehended at the border last month, shattering all records. The numbers continue to rise. What do you say we do something about it and end it? I could go on and on about how Republican leadership has failed us, but as you know just as much as I do, uh, that's par for the course. Parental rights are under attack. Our children have never been in this much danger from inside the house. Crime is spiraling out of control. Bit by bit, the Bill of Rights has just been chipped away to where I don't think there's really anything left. And the status quo in Congress appears to be just willing just to, you know, I don't know, we just won't be them. We'll just slow, we'll drive you to the same destination just a little slower. And then we'll say, hey, we're not them. This is why you're seeing the political theater now playing out in the House of Representatives. If Kevin McCarthy is allowed to become the speaker with nothing changed, if the status quo of the past decade plus is allowed to continue, then all of these issues are going to get worse. This should be a government for the people, by the people. But what we have right now is a government for the swamp, by the swamp. This is why Chip Roy and others in the House Freedom Caucus are trying to uh, stop McCarthy from being the speaker and change and awaken the GOP, if possible, in the House. I mean, the House is supposed to be the closest to us because they run every two years. They don't fear you at all. And I'm not saying we should get guns. No, no. We should make our displeasure with them very clear. But I think most of us have given up on that. Most people are like, ah, it's not going to make a difference anyway. Well, then, then you get what you get. I want to show you how out of control our system is. The congressional swamp, they just enrich themselves without any intention of doing the things that people like you want done. If you remember right, uh, when I was a kid, at least, I think most people grew up with child, uh, Schoolhouse Rock. And uh, I'm just a bill on Capitol Hill, and he talked us how a bill becomes a law. Well, let's stick with that in a very cheap, non-musical, and really poorly drawn uh, version of the bill in Capitol Hill. Because this is why this drama is now unfolding. If you have a bill... What? It just had to go in to the House, and then they had to debate it, and then, and then they'd vote on it. It was either a bill or a law, right? Not quite. A bill is proposed by a member of the House. I'm trying to just keep this really simple. So let's say the member of the House is, uh, I don't know, the front doorknob. 
and the front doorknob has an idea and it has to give it to the speaker. The speaker then sends it to a relevant committee. This is right where we are today. This is what we're arguing about. So you have, let's say it's an energy bill. If you have a bunch of people that hate big oil here, they believe in just solar and wind power, it ain't getting past this committee. So right off the bat, it's obvious that the Speaker of the House is incredibly important because he can decide to give it to this committee or not. And there are people on various committees who may not agree with you. That's fine, but is it balanced? If there are no Chip Roys or people like you in some of these committees, it's, if there's nobody in place to be a stopgap to uh, the Constitution breaking bills, we're all screwed. It's vital that you have people here that are like, hey, hey, can we check the Constitution? Can we even do that? Then if the bill makes it out of this committee, it then starts a process to head to the House. Yeah, but there's another uh, committee. This one is the Rules Committee. They get to see it first. Imagine that this is, uh, let's say, because you're talking a house, this is your insurance company. Yeah, they're gatekeepers. They don't really like you and they don't want to pay out on anything. So it's not going to get past them. But if it does get past them, then it goes to this committee. This is like uh, your HOA. And you know how much fun an HOA is. Oh, they're going to let anything through. If it's all progressives here, your bill is not going to go through. If it's all progressives here, if it's something that the progressives really, really want and is unconstitutional, it doesn't matter. But then it gets even better. Then if it passes this committee, then it goes back to the speaker. What does the speaker do? Well, the speaker is supposed to put it onto a calendar so it can be debated on the floor. When was the last time, besides yesterday, when was the last time you saw Congress together, not during a, you know, a, 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 what do you call it, the uh, uh, report card on America that the president always gives, not on the presidential address in the State of the Union, no. When was the last time you saw them debate anything? They haven't been debating anything because the speaker has been circumventing this and printed it up at the very last minute, giving it right to Congress so they can vote on it many times without reading it. This is how our swamp is ruling our country right now. This is how they represent themselves and not you and me. So what are they asking for? They are asking that they can have a few members on these committees, this one and this one, to make sure that maybe who, somebody who likes the Constitution is in those rooms, and then that the speaker put it on a calendar so it can be read and debated before the vote. Wow, such extremists. You know what I'm saying? I mean, what are they going to ask for next? This is what it's all about. The current speaker vote. This is what the small group of conservatives are trying to fight right now. Wow, that sounds radical. They're negotiating to get Kevin McCarthy to place real conservatives in the parts of the machine that can actually make a difference. And they should hold their ground until this is complete. That's the way our system works. What do you say we start using it the way it was intended? Now, Dan Crenshaw has called them enemies for standing up to the D.C. swamp. Or let me tell you something, me matey, uh, you gonna call them an enemy, you called me an enemy too, Dan. The status quo Republicans now see true conservatives, people who believe in the Constitution, as enemies. Now, why would you think that? Well. With Dan Crenshaw, it's pretty easy. The status quo has been very, very good to him. We get nothing, he gets a lot. You know, it's weird. We've talked about this amazing winning streak that Nancy Pelosi has. It's almost a supernatural ability to work with the stock market. And it's uncanny how she can just time her buys. It's amazing. 
But do you know who's even better? Yeah, Dan Crenshaw. He's one spot above Nancy Pelosi in his ability to mind meld with the market. Things must change. They have to be blown up if need be. And no, I don't mean that literally. We need a true north and the swamp cannot be it. Conservatives should not sit down. This is your last hope for the nation. We got about 24 months left, if that. We must have people doing the work of the founders and of the people. The conservative agenda for 2023, do you know what it is? Because uh, I don't. I haven't heard anybody articulate anything other than, we're going to do some stuff and we're not going to be like the Democrats. That's not an ideal to strive for. It is the personal interest of the alligators swimming in Congress. So what should we have for an agenda? What should it look like? Tonight, I want to talk about that. And joining me now, BlazeTV.com's very own Daniel Horowitz, who I was with, a very big fan of yours this weekend, the first lady of, uh, of Florida. Um, good to have you on, uh, Daniel. Uh, Great to be with you. Also, Harmeet Dillon, who is uh, looking to shake up the RNC in the same way that the House uh, uh, Freedom Caucus is. You're, she's, she's running against Ronald McDonald or, no, McDaniel, different name, same clown, and she joins me now. Hi, Harmeet. How are you? Okay, didn't understand that at all. You sound like a McDonald's speaker. Isn't that weird? Can we fix that audio and then get, uh, get back to her? Um, okay, so Daniel, I want to get just a recap on what has happened today, at least to the time of this taping. Um, it doesn't seem like they've had two votes. It doesn't seem like they're peeling any of these Freedom Caucus people away from their no Kevin McCarthy vote which is a big deal, is it not? No, absolutely. And if anything, it looks like it's grown by two to three votes, at least either voting against him or voting present. I think a lot of our colleagues that I call toe dippers, they like uh, uh, taking credit for success or joining it when it's no longer hard to push for it. Uh, they didn't envision that there would be this number of people that would actually hold. And probably if they did, they would have taken a different position. Unfortunately, some people are entrenched in that and they're just making excuses for shilling for McCarthy. So the, the reality is Republicans have controlled the House closest to people to the people, the U.S. House of Representatives for 20 of the last 28 years. Now, Glenn, name me a single trend, fiscal, social, border security um, that has gotten better and not worse. Dependency, nothing. Crime mm -hmm. was one thing that got better until it got worse. Mm -hmm. um, we, we have achieved nothing since I was inspired as a kid to get into politics in the 94 revolution. Yes. And we need to look big picture. And I think what happens now is, and I'm seeing this again with a lot of our colleagues, they have this inferiority complex that, well, what do you expect? We're only 10% of the conservative party. So, you know, you know, you can't get greedy. You know, you shouldn't be on those committees. Get more numbers. I wish well, they would have said that to the Marxists who at <laughs> one point were 10% and now seem to be everywhere. And, and we already have a Democrat party. So either start a new one or take over this one. But the status quo is is unbelievable. And I don't understand how McCarthy has been able to reinvent himself. Seven years ago, he Ooh, was man. universally regarded as a less serious version of Eric Cantor, who was defeated in a primary. Yet back then, they didn't learn their lesson. They elevated him to majority leader. And then uh, he wanted to be a speaker and, and it didn't work out. He said that I am not the man. This is not the time. We need a fresh face. Well, seven years later, after he spent his time as majority leader doing exactly what you explained at that blackboard, taking all of the most important legislative ideas, the most important must pass bills, slamming them on the floor and rules committee, making sure you're left with a false dichotomy. That's why every bill that every budget bill under Trump's trifecta, Trump, McCarthy, McConnell had more Democrat support than Republican support. 
And we're to believe now, oh, he gave some concessions, by the way, only after they challenged him, not before. They proposed the rules in July. He said, talk to the hand until November when they said, we're not voting for you. We're going to block you on the floor. So unless you enshrine that in the rules committee, they're going to change it. You know how we know that, Glenn? Because John Boehner, of which McCarthy was a part of that leadership team, they had a great document. It was called the Pledge to America. And had single issue, germane, 72 hours. And they applied that for all the post office bills. Just none of the important bills. <laughs> uh, all right. I, I want to go to Harmeet next. When we come back, um, first, let me take a quick break. Tell you about Rough Greens. If you're a dog owner, you know that taking care of your pet means more than just giving him food or water. Your dog, at least mine, part of the family, Uno is getting older and slowing down and he's completely deaf. <laughs> I mean, it's just so sad to watch your, your dog and your best friend slow down. Um, I am happy to say that w without a doubt, in my mind at least, Rough Greens gave him great years. I think extended his life. Um, he was a different dog. We started feeding him Rough Greens and it was, it was like he was a puppy. I mean, I had never seen him run and play like he did after we started feeding him Rough Greens. Rough Greens, it's a supplement that you sprinkle on top of whatever you feed your dog. And they want you to have the first bag for free. Um, check it out. Make sure your dog will eat it. That's why they're giving you a first bag for free. If your dog does eat it, then start feeding him day after day and watch the change in your dog. Roughgreens.com slash Beck. That's roughgreens.com slash Beck or call 833-G-L-E-N-N-33. Harmeet Dillon is uh, joining us now from the uh, Center for American Liberty. She's the founder and CEO, civil rights attorney, and she is also uh, running to be the uh, RNC chair. I'm going to talk to you about that, um, Harmeet, in just a minute. First, I didn't realize until just before the show went on that because I, I don't listen to talk radio. I don't I don't read others um, because I want to have my own opinions and I don't want to be influenced by others. Um, I found out before I went on the show, I'm, I guess I'm in the minority of talk show hosts that are saying, I'm done. Keep going. Go, 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 Chip Roy and the rest of you. Can you, can you speak to people who are in the GOP who are saying, that's just bad for us. They should sit down and just be quiet. Well, absolutely, Glenn. So I'm actually in encountering the exact same pushback in my race, and I'll talk about that later. But fundamentally, I think our party has strayed very far from its roots, and its roots were based in the Constitution. When I was a young uh, voter, I was not old enough to vote for Ronald Reagan, but I was chairman of Dartmouth Students for Jack Kemp. And all that the leaders of the party were talking about back then was fiscal responsibility, first principles, and none of the stuff that we're talking about today. And so I think when the party has strayed further and further away from that core, we don't even talk about the party platform. We don't even talk about fiscal conservatism, balanced budgets, the border, other than as a, as a talking point on Fox News. Then you're giving people less and less to vote for. And I think, frankly, what's happening with Kevin McCarthy today in the House is as a result of the lack of appeal that got such a narrow majority in the House. And then, you know, what are you being asked to vote for? He's not compromising on some very fundamental things. He's not even willing to go back to the Paul Ryan rules of procedure that would have allowed people to read the bills, that would have allowed uh, commitments that you have proper debate on things, and accountability. And so I think that's the problem, is there's this arrogance of power that we're seeing throughout the party. And it's not just it's not just in the House, it's in the RNC, it's in, it's in the Senate. When you don't have leadership challenges like we're seeing today, which is, I think is very refreshing, although I'm not sure what the end game is, but the, part, the, the practice itself of standing up for principles and demanding debate and accountability is incredibly clarifying and important, and we need more of that in the GOP. I will tell you that I have, I have spoken personally, had really heartfelt conversations with congressmen and senators who have said, Glenn, this is a waste of my time. I don't even know why I'm here. We don't debate. Everything is decided behind closed doors. We get the bill. We don't have time to read it, and they ask us for a vote. He's like, oh, well, what are we doing here? Yeah. I, you know, I was here to stop bad things. I can't even tell you if it's a good thing or a bad thing. And then if I don't vote for it, 
then I get hammered for it. Or if I do vote for it, I get hammered for it. And I don't even know what's in it. How That's is right. this and unreasonable to people? Look, you're you're preaching to the choir here. I mean, the fact that a lot of these people didn't even show up for the last two years to vote, right. they didn't have to. And th this is th this is exactly what I'm hearing from members. And what's exciting is you see a lot of these young members come in. And then what's sad is you talk to them two and four years later, and they're very jaded and cynical about the process. Because to get to be Kevin McCarthy or Mitch McConnell or Rana, who's like running for a fourth term now, you have to like like sit it out for decades and and guess what productive people talented people don't people who have things to offer they don't want to do that mm -mm. and so then you get people who are willing to go along get along say whatever is necessary and collect their checks from the same lobbyists that pay off both parties so this uniparty problem is a serious one and i am so happy to see some people standing up on principle now they do need to have an end game so i'm watching with great care to see what that so, is so uh, let me let me ask you this question i'll get daniel answered first give you time to think about it uh, Daniel, what should the end game be? What should they be going for? I talked to Chip Roy and he basically said what I put out on the chalkboard. That's what we want. <laughs> we want that system to work. So so right right now, I just published an article and I gave people a tour of what are the super A and A committee chairmen going to look like? And they're going to look like people with a 50 or 60 Liberty score that are in the back pocket of all of the industries that are shills for, you know, every last globalist thing that you and I are fighting against the mm. transhumanism. Um, to this day, they have no problem with what Pfizer did and funding it. Uh, it's as if the last three years never happened. It's not even item number 10, uh, you know, to end the emergency powers and the ability of a president to ever do this again. Um, and uh, immunity for for uh, vaccine injury and things like that, broad things and global warming mandates and subsidies that d diminish the quality of life and the cost of of vital goods and services. There's no big items. It's kind of like uh, the gotcha, gotcha Democrats. You know these little little nuanced things that they're doing, and you need a seat at the table whether it's the, the rules committee, some of the other committees, but a confidence that it's going to have staying power. Now, Ke the problem with Kevin McCarthy is, and you saw this with the omnibus bill, the Senate Republicans laugh at him because they know he's a joke. They know he is ideologically soulless. So what they're doing is they're like, hey, Kevin, we know you got to do your thing because he didn't speak out against kicking the CR into right before Christmas at the time and when we were talking about it it was again only after the challenge so they knew he was supportive of the omnibus idea it was hope yes vote no and you got to get this hope yes vote no off you have to pick the fight now byron donald someone who is very well respected he's not a bomb thrower he just put his name out there why shouldn't they be pressured to vote for him as the end game? Why should the pressure be on our guys? You have to get to yes on McCarthy. This is our party. We already have a Democrat party. He had his chance for 14 years in leadership. Enough is enough. Well, I will tell you this, and Harmeet, I'd like your opinion on this. I mean, I was just at, uh, I was in Florida for the inauguration of uh, Ron DeSantis yesterday. And I have to tell you, Florida is alive. It is thriving. Um, it was uh, a very positive message. And he won by 19 points. There's something he's doing that is different than what the GOP is doing. And they're not, they're, they're losing everywhere. Do they, how do they not get this, that, they are, that there is a clear path and plan? Are they just all taken by the swamp or or is there something else what what is it well because because mediocrity and failure is being rewarded by the party and we're seeing exactly that right now and so if you were you know the chair of our party right now and you had been rubber stamped into you know three terms without successful outcomes you would think you're the cat's meow and why should anybody dare 
to cross you or challenge or offer something different. What has happened very clearly in Florida is a fearless ability to draw the clear contrast between the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, between liberty and tyranny, between mutilating children and protecting children. These are very basic things. It isn't very hard to draw these contrasts. And yet, uh, you know, it took years for for the sort of corporate wing of the party there to come around and gen- gently saying, well, yes, maybe big tech censorship is bad, but we can't possibly vote for your bill that has some antitrust implications because that would put power. They always have some excuse why doing the right thing it isn't is the right thing, but they never have a proposal of their own mm-hmm. to fix the problem. And I have that problem with, you know, Jim Jordan has, has done the same, you know, issues on that as Kevin McCarthy. They make their speeches in front of Congress and then they act actually don't do anything to, ch- to challenge the problem. And so I think that a debate like this is incredibly important. It exposes, by the way, this whole theme that we shouldn't expose the divisions in the party. Yes, we should. We should be using that to make the party stronger, expose the divisions and fix it and get back to first principles. I think that is actually our duty as a party, as, as party officers to do that. I have to tell you, uh I'm waiting for somebody to stand up and lead. Uh, Otherwise, I'm gone. I just can't vote for these people anymore. And I know that's why you're running for the the RNC chair. What changes and and why do you want this? Why would this why would this be meaningful to a voter like me? Well, so good, great question. So first of all, I'm a member of the Republican National Committee, and I'm the only member of the RNC who stepped forward to challenge Rana for her fourth term. And Rana was put into place, not in a leadership election, but President Trump put her into that position, and she's been endorsed by him three times. Okay, so now she's looking for a fourth term. In those, in those six years, we've lost the House, we've lost the Senate, we've lost the White House. We don't talk about our platform. We don't talk about how we actually win elections, namely compete with the Democrats head to head and get our ballots into ballot boxes. We don't spend money on that. Uh, Middlemen take hundreds of millions of dollars out of the billion plus that was raised by the party. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. It's not okay with me. And so I've gotten in there and looked under the hood over the last few weeks as I got into this race, because Ronna promised she was going to run for only three terms. So suddenly she came up with a list of a majority of members supporting her for a fourth term. Now, I've whittled that majority away. We need to decentralize the RNC out of D.C. so we can actually hire Americans who want to do jobs. You You have a lot of talent outside of outside of D.C. In fact, most of the talent doesn't want to live in D.C. Mm-hmm. That is a fact. Pry the party out of the hands of these consultants. Do a much better job with modern technology, with digital communications, and use young influencers instead of 15% ads on television that only make consultants rich and don't reach, yep. reach people anymore. Nobody's watching that anymore. Right. You have to talk about the first principles of the party. How are you going to distinguish us from Democrats if we look like Democrats? We're talking the same gobbledygook. We're not talking about the Constitution, free speech, uh, about children, about life, about the issues that motivate a lot of people in our base. And so, you know, of course, candidates can pick and choose based on their areas. You know, I, I'm not going to fault anybody for that. But sure. the party needs to stand for hardcore principles. The party needs to stand for transparency. As a member of the Republican National Committee, the Budget Committee doesn't get access to line item budgets. It's taken me a long time to get the na- to get contact information of major vendors who get hundreds of millions of dollars from the party. Mm. These are big issues. So it, why should any Republican uh, be in favor of a system where we don't have transparency, accountability when you lose and lose and lose? I think it's pretty clear that we need change there. We need change. We need a whole fresh breath of air throughout the whole party. Uh, Mitch McConnell hasn't been challenged in a decade. Uh, RNC leadership hasn't had a, a leadership election in 12 years. So That's not Republican. That is not our principles. So, Harmeet, I, I've got to take a break, but real quick. Um, does anybody else in the in the committee i mean i assume you feel this way do they do they honestly know how the people in the country are feeling that there are millions of us who are done with the gop this is their last shot this is it yeah a lot of us do know it and uh, uh, and right now the people who are supporting the chair think they don't matter. That's a fact. Wow. Okay. Harmi, thank you very much. Back in just a minute. Every once in a while, someone who's committed a pretty serious string of crimes ends up working for the good guys. That's the case uh, in which you're about to hear what he says uh, about you and how easy it is to get into your stuff might worry you and your home title. 
Watch. Nobody thinks that I can take their house and borrow against the house. No, oh, no, I have title insurance for that. No, oh, it's in my name, or he would have to get some special document. They would call me. You know, what he's calling you? After I've stolen the title, borrowed against it, or sold the property, or done whatever I've done with it, it's 60 to 90 days to even figure out that they're the victim of this crime. You know, by that point, you start getting foreclosure notices, and you realize you've got four mortgages on your house. Not only that, you don't even own your home anymore. It's not even in your name. Almost with everything, it doesn't affect me, it's not gonna affect me, it's not gonna happen. It, it, it will, it will. It's happening all the time and it's getting more frequent, fastest growing crime according to the FBI. Um, it is, it's real bad. And there's one company that goes out there and protects your home, your home's title. Verify to see if your home is still in your name. Go to HomeTitleLock.com, use the promo code RADIO, register your address for no obligation home title report. It's a $100 value, it's absolutely free. And then protect your home and your title. Free home title report, HomeTitleLock.com, promo code RADIO. All right, um, I think it's pretty easy, for me at least, to come up with a list of things that I think the GOP should stand for. I don't think they're very hard. Parental rights. Uh, none of this crap that is, uh, you know, 92 genders is going to be taught in schools. No, sorry. You want to teach that yourself to your kids? Have at it. It's not science. It's fiction. Enough is enough. Get it out of the schools. I, for one, think the GOP should be saying we're going to abolish the Department of Education. But God, do you hear that anywhere? No, probably from my friends here and you, but that's about it. Um, the DOJ. Who's going to clean this up? Ha, what do we know about the DOJ and the CIA, the FBI, the NSA, all the spying with Twitter? And we know this is happening. And yet everybody seems in the GOP just to be sitting on their hands. Uh, the Fed, digital currency on the horizon, the collapse of our own currency doesn't seem to matter. We're on the verge of, of possibly World War III. The CDC, Fauci, is he ever going to... You know why everybody was arguing on Monday night about that guy passed out. He died because of the vaccine. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. No, he didn't. Don't blame these people for being, quote, conspiracy theorists. First, we don't know what happened to the guy. We don't know. Could be one thing, could be another, could be a mixture of things. But the only reason why we're debating it is because the CDC and our administration has so discredited almost all of the doctors and scientists that nobody believes anything that they say. Whose fault is that? The American people or all of you who stood there and preached lies and forced us to accept those lies? I don't even know where to start. Daniel, what should the agenda be for the GOP? What would unite all of us on common sense and say, if we could possibly save our country if we do these things? It starts with life, liberty, and property, and life and liberty are first, and that begins with first freedoms, freedom, liberty. Um, how do we go through the last three years and emerge from it without a recognition of the Great Reset, COVID fascism, the genocide? Yes, genocide they committed at every stage from the creation of it to the creation of more they have down the pipeline, to the shots, to the lockdowns, to the remdesivir, to the denial of treatments. All this stuff, the violation of the Nuremberg, make Nuremberg great again. So mm -hmm. A, there has to be a recognition of bodily autonomy and a right of an individual to automatically refuse any medical treatment device prophylactic in and on their body. That's something that will grab the public. They only have the house. Now, first of all, a lot of this can be passed at a state level. I have a list of about 30 medical freedom ideas at the at, at the blaze published there. But the thing is, even if it's only in the house, Glenn, people don't understand nuance. Mm -hmm. Republicans are like, you know, they'll find an embarrassing thing. Well, don't shut down schools in this situation. Or if you look at their top 11 bills, well, if illegal aliens ping the NIC system trying to purchase a firearm, notify ICE. <laughs> and it's right. like, dude, I get it. Gotcha, Democrats. But those are the type of things you pass as a motion to recommit in the minority to mm -hmm. embarrass the majority. But think categorical categorically ending the biomedical um, state, the biomedical surveillance state, the broad surveillance state. Let's talk about the Patriot Act. Let's talk about 
a cause of action against individual members of the FBI or similar agencies that are caught yes. engaging in surveillance recording of any American who for whom there is no reasonable suspicion that they have committed a crime. Um, these are things they need to go broad. They're going to indulge each of our talking points in a very superficial way so our colleagues on Fox and talk radio could have enough fodder to talk about. But the reality Believe is me, it I'd won't like move. I'd like less, Daniel. I'd like less to talk about. <laughs> it, it won't move civilization. And, and, and you know, they have a bill for, for energy, which is also the core of inflation. They always talk about inflation, the cost of living, the quality of living medicine, food, fuel, all this stuff. So they have a bill that they're going to vote on in their first 11. China can't be a recipient of Biden's rating of the strategic petroleum reserves. I, again, gotcha, Democrats. It's nice. We agree with it. How about terminating all global warming mandates and subsidies that raise the cost of living, that create crappy products, Something that affects people's lives. We know Biden is a crime family. We know but the Democrats, but the Democrats. What are you going to do to save our freedom? So, again, healthcare freedom, surveillance, um, freedom in the marketplace with, with uh, you know, the, the, the global warming stuff, categorical ideas that speak to the top issues of our time. Harmi, what would you put on the list if. If you had three things, you said this is what every uh, Republican should be fighting for right now. What would it be? Well, Daniel actually, unfortunately, took some of mine, but I'm a lawyer who filed the most lawsuits in the United States against governors for COVID restrictions. And what I have been telling Americans is, for example, under Republicans and Democrats, the EEOC which you know the president controls uh, mm -hmm. appointments to, has long held, way before COVID, that it's perfectly legal for an employer to require you to take a drug, experimental or otherwise, to keep your job. That's outrageous. And that should be one of the things that the next Republican president eliminates. The EEOC should not, have, the, uh, your employer should not have that right. I went to the United States Supreme Court for Daily Wire on that issue. Uh, qualified immunity, uh, Daniel alluded to this. The fact that the government federal government officials and state officials can do whatever they want to you. And there's virtually no ability to hold them accountable in federal court or state court for that is a huge problem. Individual liability would shift and, and maybe indemnification for them would shift the burden from the individual citizens whose rights are violated to the taxpayers. And when the taxpayers have to pay the bill for these people running roughshod over our rights, surveilling us, breaking down the door of the wrong house, um, you know, putting you into danger in a Trump rally. I had that case in 2016 and 2017. Then people would be voting out these bums. And, and and the Patriot Act is a great example. I was one of the very few Republicans back in 2001, 2002, who you. said this is a huge problem. And I got shouted down. I got mocked for being on the side of the ACLU on this issue. And guess what? I was right. Mm -hmm. And everybody else was wrong about this, except yep. for Barbara Lee, the only Democrat who would vote against this horrendous bill. And yet Republicans keep re-upping it and re-upping it and re-upping it. Um, and getting rid of the Department of Education, great idea in the Ronald Reagan era. People have forgotten about that. Balanced budget, that's a good idea. We have to do it in our homes and in our businesses. Uh, we don't even talk about these first principles. It's all lobbyist crafted, um, more transparency. I mean, just how about if you don't get to trade stocks off of inside information? If you're in Congress, that would be a revolutionary idea. How yeah. many of them, Republican and Democrat, made millions while in office? I don't care so much about the Donald Trump who got poorer while he was in office. I care <laughs> a lot more about the people who got richer using inside information. Yeah. All right. Uh, back in just a second with more. There is no such thing as a free lunch. Believe me, I've looked into it and I like lunches. Um, the same thing can be said of amazing promotion for mobile phone companies. Hey, you want a free iPhone? Right, right. Next thing you know, you're locked into a long-term contract and you're paying the price of the phone in all of the hidden fees. But when you sign up with Patriot Mobile, they can show you how to get the same iPhone interest-free, no gimmicks, no contract. Patriot Mobile is America's only Christian conservative wireless provider. They offer nationwide coverage on the best 4G and 5G networks because they use the same cell towers as the major carriers. These people actually say what they're going to do and then actually do it. 
I vote for these people, and I vote every month with my, uh, my wallet. Patriot Mobile also offers a performance guarantee. If you're not happy with the coverage, you can switch to either of the three major carriers provided for free. Just go to patriotmobile.com slash Beck or call their 100% U.S.-based customer service team at 972-PATRIOT. That's 972-PATRIOT. If you're tired of woke and you want a better deal on your phone service, save money, get great service, be with a company that believes in America, patriotmobile.com slash Beck. Um, maybe it's just me. I wanted to bring Harmeet and Daniel back in. Um, I'm more of a revolutionary thinker. I don't mean with guns. I mean, you know, we revolutionized how uh, the Internet was done. When I started this, everybody said it couldn't be done. It would never be done. And we did it. Um, and now everybody's doing it. Uh, so I like big thinking myself. Where are the big principles? Where are I don't think people even know our story anymore. So they don't have a narrative. They don't know why they should believe in one thing over another because nobody's making the case for it. Um, and it seems like the Republicans are always just um, offering, we're going to go back to the past. Where are the big ideas that say, you know what, we can do whatever we want as long as it's in the framework of the Constitution. Let's change things. For instance, it wasn't until about 1920 where lobbyists really got it. Wow, I can move my office to Washington, lobby these guys all the time, take them out to dinner, and then I can get contracts. That wasn't until after World War I. We have the technology. Everybody's worried about, oh, we, you got to keep them safe. Why? Leave them sitting, sitting right in their, in their district and their office. Let them do it from the home. Let the lobbyists all have to go to their districts to lobby them. It'll cost them a fortune and it'll keep our people here in ho at home closest to the people. Is there anybody that's thinking big ideas that's a conservative? Well, the people who are thinking the big ideas and who are conservative are not elected to Congress for the most part. <laughs> Maybe some of them are in that 20 uh, group of holdouts, but, but there's too much, I think, money in this system that likes it the way it is. Uh, so, you know, you mentioned the lobbyists. Sure, it's going to be a lot more expensive for these lobbyists to travel to the states to do that work. And by the way, I'm not a huge fan of this work from home idea. <coughs> Excuse me. Much as I think that we really need to have the use of technology, I think meeting face to face is very important in the workplace so, as well as uh, in uh, in Congress. I I, ag I agree. There is is a lot to be said for meeting in person. I'm not using that as the big idea. I'm using that as an example. We need in 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 John F. Kennedy's time, we were getting our butt beat with Sputnik. America was like, what are we what are we going to do? And he said, we're going to put a man on the moon and bring him back in the next decade. I don't want a big spending thing, but I do want a moonshot idea. There's got to be something that the conservatives can offer and show and paint. This is what life can be like if we do this work now. But can I say that the power of incumbency, I think, works against that, and that's one of the issues. I was never in favor of term limits until fairly recently when I see that there's just no way to extract these people from their seats unless you yeah. have some turn enforced turnover. And the, the counter argument is, well, that gives more power to the staff, et cetera. You can deal well, you with that issue, too. Yeah, you, All of those issues can be dealt with. Term uh, limits there. But the fact there. is— when, when there's so much economically invested and invested by outside economic forces in the status quo, you get no turnover at the RNC, Correct. no turnover in the House, no turnover, no turnover in the Senate. I think you have to break up that dynamic. I mean, just in the consultant class, the idea that what the Democrats are doing in this election cycle are they're investing in data and they're investing in influencers. What a crazy idea. Maybe we should consider yeah. getting ahead of the curve and using cheaper, younger people to influence the vote because they're the future voters. But no, how would consultants make their 15 percent on the ad buys if they didn't have the old system? So these are the things we need to break up. Uh, so, I, yeah, you know, you know this because of what you went through. I went to the Trump administration for six months, giving them Mark Elias. Here's what's happening. Here's what they're doing. Here's how they're, why aren't we in the courts? 
Yep. N- n- we don't do it. We still aren't doing it. We are I mean, not even. One of the reasons I'm running. Our GOP isn't even um, doing the things that are legal to do. You may not like them, but they're legal. So do them and change the law if yes. you don't like them. We don't do those things. We're going to get beat time and time again unless there's a massive change. Yeah, you're preaching to the choir here. And the, and the fact that, that people are afraid to say that, they're afraid to piss off a particular politician or what have you. No. That's not a reason not to do the right thing. I personally don't care. Like, I have my law business and I have my nonprofit and I'm very satisfied doing that. I'm not satisfied with losing. That's why I'm stepping forward. And it seems very obvious that at a minimum, you'd be competing with the Democrats. To get an A, you'd be beating them. And, and doing better things. We aren't even at the competing with them no, stage, no. Glenn, so forget about I the know. big ideas. Can we just have the small ideas of doing better than them at what <laughs> yeah, they're doing? Yeah. I'll, I'll settle for that in the short term. In the long term, leadership is gonna require new leaders, quite frankly. You're not gonna yeah. get leadership out of the current crop. Daniel, we have two minutes. What's left to be said? How do we get to a place where we actually save the republic? You you, you know, you combat globalism with localism. And I think we have Madison's blessing still with us that at the end of the day, we don't have to win everywhere. I mean, it's best to win as much as you can. You know, I'm kind of down on the federal government and any prospect of really changing it. But we have significant portions of the country where on paper, a super majority of people voted for Trump. We've talked about this a lot together, Mm -hmm. how you have half the states where the Republicans have super majority trifectas. There's no Democrats. There's no but the Democrats this. The Democrats might do that. What are you going to do? It's but the Republicans. And I think that's where we need to start pie the corner, take off smaller chunks. How do we make Texas red again, state legislatures great again? Um, and it's going to require more people like Hermit that are going to step out of their comfort zone and be willing to stand up, run for state legislature, run for governor in particular, and also hold them accountable. Focus on the state legislative sessions. Focus on local media in red states. We're lacking a lot of that accountability. And I think that bottom up approach is ultimately the only way to combat the top down globalist approach. Hermit, last word. Yeah, I completely agree. We really have to get back to the roots. Uh, The disrespect and the contempt for the grassroots voters in our country is showing in what we're seeing on the television screens today in D.C., what we're seeing at the RNC, what we're seeing in donor money drying up around the country for Republicans. And unless we really begin to rebuild trust by results at the local level, we are done as a party. We are a permanent minority party, and that is terrible for America. America needs a vital two-party system. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Back in just a minute with my final thought. I'm going to have a lot more on this on tomorrow's radio broadcast. Um, I'm going to give you something that you can actively do in your state. We have got to fix and monitor and do everything that is legal that the Democrats are doing to be able to even be steady with them. I'll explain that tomorrow and a few other things that I think um, will root you at home and could help save the nation. That's on tomorrow's radio. From Dallas, good night, America.